we'll be talking about identity IQ configuration. So the first thing is the mail settings. So this is very much necessary when you're working in a development environment, right? Or let's say you're working in a uh, local, uh, local environment, then you need this mail settings. To, why is it needed? You need to see if the mail has been properly received by the user or not. For example, let's say uh, you're creating a custom workflow and you're doing an approval process where the first approval goes to the manager and then the second one goes to the director. Now, when the first approval goes to the manager, you should have a configuration, right, which sends the email to the manager asking for the request. Please either approve it or reject it, right? You got it? So, in order to check uh, while doing in the dev environment, if the manager receiving an email or not, in, a, in a real time projects, you cannot have an SMTP email notification. Uh, uh, whoever will be your manager, it'll just send an email to them, right? But the problem is we cannot see that in, so that's the problem. So in that case, we what we need is you can redirect it to the particular file. So that's helpful, right? So so just give the file never over here, the path of that thing and that should do the job right and uh, just give the file name you can give any from address from where the uh, it should be right from where you want to send the email let's just uh, give sale point all right Sale point at the demo.com. So maximum email retries should be 20. If any email fails, so it will try to set the maximum, the maximum number of retries, the maximum number of times it will send it is 20. And if there is any, if there is any duplicate emails, the same user again, then it will try to suppress this duplicate, duplicate option, duplicate. Uh, if you have chosen this option, in case if you're uh, viewing uh, and you, if you have SMTP enabled only for the QA environment, and I wanted to test it, then you have something called as read to email. So here, uh, email goes, let's say email goes to the manager, the email will go to the user who you are giving the email address here. So uh, it's pretty much useful because uh, let's say if you don't have access to the manager ID, then this much is useful. Uh, let me just uh, give this and um, then the email goes to my manager, right? It will also send an email to my ID. Then that's pretty much useful. So whatever the process you are doing on the thing, all the it's pretty much like a redirection email. That's all, right? So uh, all this SMTP details and other details will be provided by your organization. So you don't need to worry about that things, right? So uh, whoever is your administrator, he will be providing. Uh, all this email campaigns, campaigns. Um, I'll talk about uh, more of it, like what configuration you need to use for this session later. So, uh, what email templates you'll be using, and what are, what I'll talk more about the templates. All right, no need to worry on that thing. And after the fresh installation, you will have the email settings. Uh, then you need to configure it. And next thing should be your logging right so whatever customization you do make sure that you are enabling logging in the code so you can actually trace your errors and debug your uh, stuff so where the errors are occurring and all that thing okay so one drawback um, in sale point uh, you can say what i feel is whenever a system uh, in your code throws a null point exception error right uh, it never shows the line of code that throws the error, right? So that means which rule, uh, which part of code it is throwing the error. That's a real bad drawback. So whenever you're doing any uh, coding in sale point, you have a null condition checked everywhere. So since you know there's an issue with that, just uh, take care of it earlier, right? So otherwise it's pretty difficult to troubleshoot. Uh, that's, that's from my experience. And you go to the debug page, you can see this particular icon over here and you can click on the login. So here we have our uh, log4j over properties and in the this particular window, right? So 
identity IQ okay now just go to that if you're using this uh, system.out.print.ln you will be able to see the log directly in the servers for example uh, if you want to see the log in the particular file if you want to see that in the file then you can uh, do this redirect right so root logger just enable root logger and the import statement you can make it apache or uh, import dot apache something like that so if you do that then you can you can create log of files in your sy system right in your code i mean and uncomment all these particular lines that you, that is not necessary right in the log 4 j files so you can see in the there's a window called as log 4 j which is there uh, sale point dot log right um, you if you want to change it ch uh, change the uh, path of this particular thing you can always do that that's not a problem just create a folder the privileges and then give the path here uh, you know what happens when you have a lot of logins lot of uh, uh, issues then then the log file will be very big then it it will go very big then it's very difficult to uh, debug because the file is very big you will not be able to open because you know right the file size if it is greater than 1 GB then it's very difficult so always remember when you try to uh, always try to roll over your files right so if it reaches a particular level let's just say uh, 1 GB or let's just say 500 uh, MB then you create another file right and what you do is you give the date and the timestamp if you do that then it becomes very very easy right otherwise it's uh, uh, it becomes difficult so all this stuff you should be able to you should remember when you're uh, when you want to configure right all that uh, things and yeah that's the log 4g log 4g is something that you would have also seen in a lot of other applications uh, applications anything that is related to java and apache this is spe more specific to it's a part of apache it's nothing to do with uh, sale point as such but since sale point is built over uh, apache as an application server so that's why you can see here and there are different types of logins that are uh, present here uh, in case tomorrow if you want to um, any enable any of this logging right and then uh, you can always change it and you have to restart this particular application then it works fine okay um, sometimes it's necessary but uh, mostly it's, let's say you have you're getting some kind of errors that uh, some kind of issues that you cannot track thanks guys thank you very much